what is the top tier thing that kills a talent or a brand? Dougie Fresh told us this one time, you have to continue to make the main thing the main thing. We come from a hip hop era where being different was cool. Mm -hmm. What kills a career is when they say, I want to do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. As soon as you say that, that's a huge red flag. Right. Who's doing it how you want to do it? It's not copying it. It's just like, bro, put your own seasoning on it. You're offering something to an audience that's very different and unique from what a Westbrook would do or Spring Hill. Everyone brings a different sauce, right? Correct. You have a very unique platform, but there's right. a different consumer right. that you're speaking to every time they tune in. Appreciate you for tuning in in this episode of Funky Friday. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this. And if you're feeling really funky, leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie to all. And I'm here with another episode of Funky Friday. And I'm here to deliver real content for the masses. But always, always, always promise to keep it funky for your asses. Today, we have... Mrs. Dora and Mr. Mike Whitley, and together they are responsible for representing global talent, a media company, a production company, business management, as well as a consulting agency. And together, both of them are married and they are the Whitley Agency. That's right. That's, That's right. Are. Thank you for having us. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, thank you for, for coming. Now, how did how did this this have we we got all we 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 started talking off camera. <laughs> And it was a little, it was a little shaky. <laughs> it wasn't nobody lying, but his recollection of how y'all met versus your recollection of how y'all met. It's two different stories. Take me, take me through it. <laughs> you know, that's what they say. It's always your story, his, and then God's, right? Mm. So that's that's what they say. But you know, we we morphed this relationship okay. out of business first, right? right? That was the intent of it. I re I moved to Georgia from North Carolina. All right. And I was working for a private bank here in Buckhead. Mm. But while I was working at the private bank, I always sat at the edge of my seat. Mm. And by that, I mean I was a powerpreneur. I knew that wasn't my final destination. Okay. Um, and entrepreneurship has always been a passion. And so I would work by the day and go to events at night. Mm -hmm. um, and with my clients, I built my client base. One of those clients were Carl Payne, Carl Croach from the show Martin. Okay. Shout out to Carl. Yeah. Um, but Carl was like my pilot project, I guess you can say, right? Um, working with him while I was handling business for Kenny Rogers at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, handling his on the business banking side. This is kind of my introduction into the world of entertainment mm -hmm. and wanting to learn more. I've always been searching for higher thoughts. And so, I was out for a Halloween party with Carl, and this man here to my left, you know, was speaking to Carl about some business. And then Carl, I remember saying, hey, speak to my manager, Dora. And that was the beginning of it. Mm. He was inviting Carl out to a red carpet screening. I believe it was Captain America or something mm -hmm. uh, back in 2013. And, you know, we made a business meeting, took a rain check. Well, he took the rain check. <laughs> you know, they would make another business meeting. And yeah. eventually it happened where months later we connected. Um, timely. I was in a marriage on my way out, and mm. at the time, Mike was engaged on his way out, and God had it for what? us. To, yeah. God had it for us to exactly. join forces. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, when yeah. we met, it was strictly business. It was strictly business. Yeah. So at the time, uh, I moved down from Milwaukee after spending 30 years giving my city nothing but love, and I still love the city. Yeah. But I needed to get to a, a you know a bigger metropolitan city. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, you know, called my name and I said, I, hey, I'll come. And I was working with my brother. We were doing some amazing stuff. We're working with film networks and and doing a bunch of uh, press screenings, advanced screenings, mm -hmm. corporate events. Um, and uh, Frank Skis, I stayed across the street. I saw this beautiful lady after Carl said, hey, give my information to my manager. Mm -hmm. I said, she came over. At first I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems yeah. like the assistant type. Right. Uh, come to find out, uh, she is definitely my equal. She's a powerhead, mm. and I, I love her for it. Um, we connected again at a screening in 2014, which was Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yes, that's And what this was. is the first introduction within that Marvel series that they're introducing the first black superhero, which was Anthony Mackie. 
Wow. Yeah. So everybody came out. Marvel was there. I mean, this is, you know, in Atlanta. It's a big deal. It's yeah. a big deal. And uh, who's, you know, Carl was actually there. He showed up. Right. And I said, Carl, you know, where's, where's Dora? Mm. And he Put says, me on blast. Where's the explorer? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where's she at? He said something like, you know, I, 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 she's supposed to be here. Maybe, you know, she, she's out in the parking lot. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if you can't get me to my seat and let me go ahead and, you know, get to this movie. Right. And that's what I did. But I came back out to wrap things up. Right. And uh, I see these two ladies over by the side. And they just, you know, chit-chatting <laughs> away. So me, being the man that I am, I approached them. I said, hey, listen, you know, the movie started. I can get you some seats. You know what right. I'm saying? And uh, one girl said, you know, we cool. We're just going to chill here. And I'm like, okay. And then Dora looked at me and says, uh, I don't know about you, girl, but I'm going into this movie. <laughs> you going to be in this movie too? Sure. You get popcorn, listen, I bring the butter. Listen, Come on okay, with it. Okay. You remember what you said? I said, I, I said my, I'm actually here because my client, but I'm running late, so I can't go in there just yet. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then she said, do you remember me? And I said, do you remember me? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I said, who am I? And he was like. I said, I'm not good with names, but I do remember you. Mm. And he pulled one of those moves, you know? So he, he. And I was like, he don't could have knocked me. it out the park, but Listen. he just bunted it. But he yeah. got on base, though, huh? Yeah, he got on, he hit base. He said, I said, I'm Carl Payne's manager. He was like, that's right. And gave me the friendly hug and the little tap on the side. And I was like, okay, now, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was it. So before we, we're going we gonna to press was. pause on this, this, this intricate <laughs> love story here. I, I want you guys to. Like how, what's your strategy when you're trying to find different talent? Does the talent find you? Do you, do you scout, you know, how, take me through that whole process. We don't scout. We've been so blessed in all of our years to have people refer talent to us. Mm. Right. Uh, we've kept a very authentic brand and an authentic style of work. Uh, we go fully in. So by that, I mean, it's more than work for us. We get to know our clients. We get to know their families. We get fully integrated into their system and the network, right? And that's intentional because we're people person. Yeah, it has to be that way. Right. We're people person. Yeah. I mean, this is hospitality at its finest, yep. right? Where you are, we all are in, in, in some regards servant based. Yep. Where it could be, man, I want a frappuccino from McDonald's, or you know, I'm craving whatever. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, hey, my girlfriend. It's our anniversary or my wife's anniversary. I need somebody to go. How do you manage that? I uh, might take that one. I would say that for us, um, our ability to lead is really based upon our ability to serve. Yeah. Mm. And so for us, you know, servitude is just within our natural bond. Um, I mean, of course, coming from two different directions, but still integrated in, like somewhat in the same business allowed us to just come, come together closer and easier, right? Right. So, I mean, for us, I mean... I, we've been intentional. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, yeah. I was coming out of a hard... I, I mean, it was my first marriage out of college. Mm -hmm. We all went through that path, right? We think you found the one and mom was like, no, stay away. And you're like, no, this is it. You know, and so we were intentional coming into the relationship. We set boundaries. Mm. You know, he was coming out of a hard time. And so when we decided to come together, and build this agency together and come under one umbrella, mm -hmm. it was it was a different change. It was a change because right. I'm like, I have to live with you, I have to work with you, but we understood each other and we understood each other's lifestyle, right. which is fast paced. Absolutely. So yeah. as as this is is kind of happening, mm -hmm. all right? Um, like first take me back, Mike, to that transition from Milwaukee to Atlanta, right? Uh, did you go to school? For marketing, did you go to school for branding? You know, how did you come about with an opportunity where you had like a moment where it's like, bro, I think I want to do this. Yeah. I went to school for business, and that was at Lakeland College in Sheboygan, which is between uh, Green Bay and Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, decided that you know, after school, I got to do something. I went back to Milwaukee, started working with Time Warner Cable. Mm. So right from the start, I was already into the television business, just more so on the business side. Right. Um, and of course, after that, I've always kind of like realized I, I was making, you know, some decent money, but I was always striving for more. Right. And I, I just, whatever happened, I, I just never could hit that mark, no matter how many uh, promotions I got, how much, 
the commission I got. So I decided to do some promotion, uh, some event promotion. I became a promoter. Okay. But not for a club, special events. Okay. Mm-hmm. Those events take off. And I'm uh, working with some great people, and I still can't hit that cap. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I understand it's because of the city, I have to make moves. I have right. to go to another city where I can spend more time with my people that's making more money. And so I came to, you know, came to Atlanta uh, 2012. First five years was rough. I was trying to do what I was doing in Milwaukee and Atlanta. I had to have an old head pull me to the side and tell me to slow down. It said, uh, you got to know the city of Atlanta. You know, you got to build a relationship with the city of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You can't, can't do the things that you were doing in your old market because you're in a new market. But give me an example, though. Um, I mean, let's say, for example, I was trying to you know, do a poetry show. Our poetry show was in Milwaukee during that time. You know, this is during the, 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 the neo soul era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, listen, I was trying to do a poetry show here. And uh, I remember it was, what was the one place off of... Uh, uh, down, um, downtown that was already kind of like popping was kind of like a whole. I think wall. Peter ended up getting it. I know Buddy Sheraton. I can't remember. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah. um, I was trying to do a poetry set. Uptown comedy. Yeah, yeah, and okay. I was trying to get people to to come, and it was like, bro, we don't know you. Wow. Like we, I mean, we love what you're trying to do, but yeah. hey, listen, until you can go ahead and get you know your name recognized here in in in, in the promotional streets, like we can't really rock with you. And at the time. You know, again, I do events. Right. I don't do week to week promotions. So it was just really tough. But this is still, I'm still knocking it out on the corporate side, doing the film promotion, doing the television promotion. I'm a social media manager. That was my day to day. Right. All right. Um, of course, at the time, you know, again, just being able to, to, to link up with Dora was a blessing. And I say that because at the time of me coming out of my engagement, I got engaged in Atlanta, but I was still living in Milwaukee. Mm. The plan was to go ahead and come back to Atlanta, improve our lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. And be able to go ahead and pour back into Milwaukee from our learnings here in Atlanta. Uh, Of course, that relationship went sour. Mm. Um, At the time that I connected with Dora, was very interesting because I was at home watching uh, football, football, all the playoffs, and um, I was reading, I was, I was doing some reading, I was reading a textbook, and I got and a- And I'm the nerd though, you heard that right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got a phone call about coming down to the city uh, because one of her clients was celebrating her birthday. That's right. right, that's right. And I thought about it, and this is at the time where I'm living outside the skirts of Atlanta, so getting to the city was, was a travel. Mm. I took that chance, man, and I said, you know, I'm gonna go. And this is what first came to mind, Cam, is that this ain't the business meeting that we were supposed to have. Yeah. I'm getting invited yeah. to a, no birthday party. a party outing. Um, and again, very different from Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. So I'm having to you know, rely on God to, to, to direct me. You right, know? right, right, right. Leave me, God. You know, this is what I've been praying for. I've been praying, I've been praying for a wife before college. Mm. And it's only because I've been seeing my parents, you know, 50, year, 50 plus years together. Um, I saw and I got to witness like the, the beautification of relationship. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, don't get it wrong, you know, as in other, you know, all families, there was ups and downs. Correct. It's a roller coaster Correct. ride. But it was, it was always interesting to me that most of the successful couples, like the, some of the most successful households mm-hmm. that I grew up around, had both of their parents. Yeah. They were married. But I, but ooh. Let me stay here. Yeah, yeah. Real quick. Did you come from that? I came from that as well. I came from that. My parents have been together all the way to my mom's passing. Mm. So I say this, and the reason why I, I, I bring that up, I'm no, no relationship guru, right? right? I'm no person that can that has the right to say if this is of God or if this not, y'all ain't gonna last. But what I will tell you is this, right? I have seven children, Mm -hmm. beautiful children, right? right? Um, And two different baby mothers. Mm -hmm. So how dare I say I have, I got the the, the answers. One thing I can tell you, I don't live life, right? right? And that's what I tell my children, like, listen, (laughs) my boy, I've been there. And got an award, medal, ring, yeah. all that. Right, right. 
Shakir, baby, I'm pre I'm I'm preventing you from right. dudes like me. Right. Right. When I was in set, when I was seventeen, That's, you yeah. know, I could play. I got the gift of gab. Boy, I could sell a book to a dog on preach. Hello. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Milk to a cow. Right. I could talk a dog on cat off a dog on fish fish <laughs> truck fast. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I say that. But I'm saying this to the, the person who's trying to find a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's tough when the person that you're yearning for or the person that you want, they don't have the examples that they need in their life. Meaning, that is facts. When people yearn for that person and that person that they're yearning into, they don't have no positive influence to, to be able to tell them, girl, let me tell you, so and so and so. I was at, what's it called? And I seen your mans over there with Britney. Right. Mm -hmm. To have an ecosystem of people who can not just say, girl, I knew he won back. So let's go on and go down and get us some Long Islands and some. Right. Right. right? We're your champions. Yo, 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 friends, she ain't got no man. She divorced. But she's giving you advice. Though. She disgruntled. Right. But this is the person that's speaking to, to your, your mental, mental. To your mental. Your homeboy. And, and you listening. To him. And you listening to him. Yep. Your homeboy. He ain't never had a woman. He on his third baby mama. He on this. He on that. But this, the, these are the folks that you're hanging out with. Yep. All I'm saying, I made all that to say, you have to make sure that your ecosystem of friends are just mentally aligned with what you align with. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And this is no diss to any single family household. Yeah. I'm just letting you know from my experience from the streets that I come from. Yeah. And to add to that, I'll, I'll tell you this too. I think part of what you're saying makes a lot of sense, especially what's being taught inside the household. Correct. Because I can tell you this, my parents, now, my father raised me to be a man. Mm -hmm. My mother raised me to, to, to become one day a husband. Mm -hmm. And both of my parents, Put together that they they instilled in me that hey listen yeah. you got a tool that works you may be a father one day <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it was easy for me to to, to always want to get married no yeah. and I've been I, I tried several times and as far as engagements yeah. and sometimes it's it's, it's, it's nobody's at far wall at for it right yeah. so um, when the opportunity came uh, to me you know. I did a bunch of prayer, and at the time I was working on myself. Facts. Flat out. That's the reason why I was chilling at the crib Facts. on a Saturday night, yeah. reading a damn textbook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I got a, I got an invite, and that invite changed the course of my life forever. Mm. Uh, up to this, up to this interview. Absolutely. So. And I like that. What I will say, as we kind of go into a whole nother phase. I would love to play a game uh, with you guys, Let's right? Do it. Let's do it. The name of the game is Five Tips for Talent, right? Featuring the Whitley Agency. Usually I'll have different things where we do this, a platonic game, a googly, and da 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 da. da. Mm -hmm. But this world right now that we live in is so prominent in, in, in branding and representation of yep. yourself. You see it. You don't necessarily, back in the day, you would have to have a uh, resume. Mm -hmm. Right. Instagram's your resume. Hey. LinkedIn's your resume. Exactly. Because if I'm sitting up here trying to be hired by a Whitley agency, the first thing that y'all are going to do is let me find out what Google has to say. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I want you guys to give me five quick tips for any talent trying to build or improve their branding today. And how we're going to do it, you're going to say one, you're going to say one, you're going to say one, you're going to say one. That's going to equal four. And as you guys are one, we're gonna you guys you a fifth one. Here we go. Ladies are first. Of course, I would say know your instrument um, and work to perfect your instrument mm -hmm. before you can, so that you can present it in a proper way. Okay. Mine is you got to do your research. You got to know your history uh, in regards to the industry that you're going into. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, I want to be actors. I want to be a musician. Well, okay, great. Who are you modeling your career off of? Like, what's, how are you setting the bar in terms of what you're going after? Because if you don't know who's actually set the path for you, you really don't know where you're going. Right. You're going to be lost. Right. When it comes to branding, it's important to be identify what is your unique differentiator, what sets you apart from the world, from mm -hmm. the competition, right, in the field that you're working in. So be able to clearly define what makes you different right. in that ecosystem, in that field. Mm. And then, of course, uh, you know, where's your ego at versus your pride? Thanks. Because within this business, you got to check both of them, mm. all right? 
one of my mantras and my models, our models is actually that relationships matter more than money. Mm. Relationships can set you, you know, it can either set you back or it can set you ahead, right? So again, you gotta be able to, to properly communicate, but you also gotta listen. You know, God gave you two ears so you can listen twice. Mm. A lot of people don't like to listen. They like to do the, you know, they're stuck in their ways and stubborn and like to do their own thing. But what about the person that said God gave you two lips too? Ooh. But okay. God only gave you one mouth. I, I agree with you, two lips, one mouth. I figured this, you know, again, if you are building a team mm -hmm. and your team is giving you advice, right. you want to kind of be open-minded to listening to what they're saying, especially if that's what they're doing. That, they're here for you. Right. They're here to serve you. So again, ultimately it's their decision, right. but we're here to support. Yeah. And the would, fifth one. The fifth one I would say is messaging. Like, be consistent in the messaging that you want the world to receive or perceive you as. I 100% totally right? wow. agree with that. Don't wow. be this person. To, and it's okay to wow. morph and hey, evolve, hey, that's, right? Hey, that's it right it's, now. I it's okay. I, oh, my God. That yeah. You can't be all this hot girl summer and then you trying to sell a book. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. What are they going to focus on? Right. What are they going to focus Come on? Come on now. And in you today's know? society, they can tell what's real. And what's not. And what's... What's the act? Like, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It begins with authenticity and just keeping consistent with that messaging. That's mm -hmm. it. Because that's how we'll perceive you. And as humans, we're meant to judge and inflict, you know, infer opinions and stuff like that. And so it's important. Man, I love it. I love it. I think some you guys dropped some some major Eliante diamonds, <laughs> ruby red, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and see um, that. See I think that. I think for you guys, you know, going back to this this particular moment of um you know, just the servant's mentality. Like, what is the the top tier thing that kills a talent or a brand? When you when you start representing a person, right? Let's give Joe Blow, right? He comes on, what's the common denominator that you feel like it's just gonna tarnish, you know, his want to to be able to for you guys to do your to be able job. to scale them. That's a great right. question. Yeah. I think we're gonna have end up having different answers. Go ahead. I'm gonna. You say, want me to go first? Go, go. All right. So for me, it's uh, and Dougie Fresh told I us this it. one time. We were sitting at the table eating dinner, and he told us that you have to continue to make the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. And what can easily what has killed a lot of uh, careers in the business of entertainment and also corporate is that you are always trying to... Live your life for others. Exactly. Right? Live your life for others. Like, like it's living your life for others, uh, comparing your life to others, instead of just having the faith within yourself and your own path. Mm -hmm. Like, I got to get to where she's at. Yeah. Oh, your homie is over here killing it. What is he doing that I'm not doing? It's not about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Focus on your now. Focus on where you're going and stay consistent on that path. No, right. It was something that you said, Mike, yeah. and it was um, know who's doing what you're doing. That is not comparing, right? I, I, I sit down and talk to my team about companies that I admire, right. production companies that I admire, and I'm no thief of, of, of information. I'll say I really admire I Am Athlete. Mm -hmm. I really admire the pivot, Thanks. right? I really love Spring Hill. I really love Westbrook, mm -hmm. Westbrook Films. Um, I really love Omaha Productions. Absolutely. Right? I'm not, their competition, but it's respected and, and, and it's respected in a way where I don't hate on that. If right. they ask me to do something, I'm going to do it, right? right? Because it's and not even necessarily charge. It's more, I want to see how I can become better because I've also heard this exposure to something mm -hmm. yeah. is the greatest teacher. A hundred percent. Right? Yeah. I always tell my all-star kids, like, bro, you got to get out of 285, yep. bro. You got to. You get out of 285, you start seeing palm trees, you start it seeing in and out Burger, you start seeing Learn. gun threes, you start yeah. seeing all different type of stuff. Then, then you go back to where you from and just like, damn, bro, where what you get you this damn lime That's green like, whole no. fit? Yeah. Bro, I went to New York, bro. Them boys are stepping, dog. Yeah. They had this whole thing. I, I spoke about it, uh, you know, in another interview about the bambushka. Yeah. Like, when I came back from Paris, them... 
the dudes, bro, they was fresh as hell. And I'm like, nah, I gotta step my game up. I can't just keep rocking these jerseys and all this and these Absolutely. jeans. It's like, bro, they 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 putting this European steez on it. So it's first uh, uh, understanding who's doing it, how you want to do it. It's not copying. It's not trademark infringement. No, no, no. It's just like, bro, put your own seasoning on it. And it gives you perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It gives you perspective. And the thing is, you're offering something to an audience that's very different and unique from what a Westbrook would do or Spring Hill. Everyone brings a different sauce, right? Correct. An ingredient to their... Like, you have a very unique platform, but there's exactly. a different consumer right. that you're speaking to every time they tune in. Right. Same Maybe. with I Am Athlete. Y'all are speaking to different demos. Correct. You follow what I'm saying? Exactly. And so I think that's what there's... It, just watching it allows you to open your lens up and say, hey, maybe I can change this up a little mm -hmm. bit or I may add this little bit of sauce, but it doesn't mean you're copying. Right, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and you spoke, you, you hit on very two important points. Uh, and, and one I'm just gonna follow behind my wife on what she just stated mm -hmm. is, we come from a hip hop era where being different was cool. Mm -hmm. You know, you started to lose sight and this is what, you know, you saying what kills a career is when they say, I want to do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. As soon as you say that, that's a huge red flag. Right. Correct. It's like, okay, it's great to identify what they're doing, but how can we be different mm -hmm. and still be able to capture exactly what, you know, what we're trying to execute? Absolutely. And then the second point is, is that uh, expanding your, your mind, your mindset, right? Being able to get out of your comfort zone. You said get out of 285. Mm -hmm. It's so ironic that you say that because me and Dora are world travelers. Mm -hmm. Right, even to the point where we, so when we started our relationship, Cam, when we said we set boundaries, we, we poured into each other in terms of what exactly do we want to do together mm -hmm. as, a, as a couple. And I, I looked to my wife and I said, listen, I've been on the grind working for so long. I, I, I can't remember when I actually left the city mm. and Back. for so long. And Dora right away, her response was like, I travel. I don't know what you do, but I travel. I travel. Baby, baby. my dog on passport stamp. Listen. I got unbelievable miles that I could, I could buy a trip with my miles. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Which brings me to this point right here. Yes. All right? It's really two things. Um, but the first one is this. What were you guys non-negotiables? Non-negotiables was phones. I don't do phone passcodes. We have the same passcode. Oh. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> I just want to get... It's about being authentic. Bring your, I want you 100% at the table. And your life is my life. And then you have your separate life. And I have my separate life. Hold together, so, we make a beautiful life. So you're life. saying you guys don't check phones? We don't, listen, we don't check phones, but we have access to each other's phones. Okay. I don't intentionally go and look at his phone. And he doesn't intentionally come look at my phone. Okay. But... If he was to pick up the wrong phone and go out for the, you know, for the day and realize, oh, I picked up the wrong phone, it's not an issue. Mm. It's not an issue. Absolutely. Let me tell you something, man. Yeah. I'm very confident with who I am as a person and as a man. Mm -hmm. So if there was anything, any, you know, any problems that I was having in, in my relationship, then it's best believe I bring it to the table to the person that I'm in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, hers was like, you know, uh, you cell phone. First date. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, at the time I was I was being a young Thundercat out there because I, yeah, I was a single. Thundercat. <laughs> and, uh. and when we established this relationship, she says, uh, "Yeah, you got." She, what did you say? She said, uh, "You got one day to get rid of all your <laughs> and all, all, all your all your honey booze." And I'm like, "Yo, listen, I need at least two weeks. I'm out here breaking hearts. I got to go on a, a heart a, 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 any heartbreak tour. You know and you only giving me 24 hours." You know but um, you know, that was, you know, that was hers and she said also like, you know, I don't do lock phones uh, or hidden agendas. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, listen, if I'm pouring into this relationship the right. same as you, I got nothing to hide." Right. right. But I will say I said this and going back to this is a tough question that I must ask. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You were engaged. Mhm. Mm right? I was engaged. You was engaged. So at the yeah. you were coming off of a marriage. Long term, long term, yeah. A long term relationship, mm -hmm. right? You guys met each other in a such a vulnerable time in both of you guys' life, mm -hmm. right? To the viewer who sees this, it's, it's like, all right, how soon is it that I get to set parameters of what my expectation is for this man to say, hey, listen, we dating after a week, look, 
all them honey boos, they about to be through. Like, is that too soon? What's your time frame? And obviously I'm speaking, you know, for the masses, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you guys, what's a realistic, you know, kind of uh, process that you kind of go through? Yeah. You going through your issues, he's going through his issues, and together you guys have been able to, what it seems like something yeah. that's, that's sustainable. No, honestly, and I can say this today, just looking back, is that it was a part of my healing, mm. right? Because I was coming out of really traumatic. You know, traumatic situation, but I knew that I still believed in family, right? My aunts have been married for a long time. My mother and my father have been married for a long time. So I still believe in the essence of family. Mm -hmm. But the reason I had to set boundaries because I needed to learn from my previous relationship and know not to carry that in my future mm. relationship. Now, most people would probably get scared away, but I'm a very direct person, right? Yeah. Or I try to be. And so I came in it from an honest place, you know, and I, it wasn't to scare him, and I'm glad it did not scare him because it worked, um, but it was a part of my healing. And so when it comes to setting time for the person at home, when it comes to setting time, it's really contingent on where you are in your path, mm -hmm. right? When your path of growth, I knew I was ticking up in age. I knew I wanted to eventually have children. So for me, time also played a factor, mm -hmm. right? And making sure that I was getting with the right person and not wasting my time, right? right? And so that was my that was my anchor there. So even even when you say, um, you know, time, it's like, how do you know when it's time to leave? I knew, I knew. I knew, and I knew it was coming because there's this a certain tolerance level that every human being can bear. But. Right? And mine was, you can forgive, but how many times do you forgive to where you're like, hey, I gave you all my 20s. I don't know if the 30s are going but to be But just, to, just, I want this to be somewhat controversial mm -hmm. in, in this type of uh, arrangement, right? When we all set vows or when we set, or when I hear, I'm not married, mm -hmm. never been married, um, but I've witnessed something where I've heard numerous marriages and they set vows. Mm -hmm. right. And one thing that the preacher always says, death do yes. us part, right? Right. right. Um, I got you now. I with, got you. With, what was that turning? What that, you... I can tell you. Nobody died. You no, know I can saying? tell you. Okay. I can tell you. For me, it was two things. Okay. Very simple. One, I, w I was outgrowing the relationship. Okay. Right? My path of growth, we were in the line. So it became like jealousy almost. Mm -hmm. The second part of it is I always say I don't look good in, in orange intentionally. So when your mind starts to f*** with you and you're like, hey, he's going to make me do some stuff that are out of character mm. and I may end up in jail. I didn't come to this country on my parents' back. Mm -hmm. to end up in an orange suit. So I always say, and I, he jokes, but I'm always serious, I'm right? Not joking. Orange, I'm not I don't joking. look good in orange intentionally because I'm always like, I'm not gonna be locked into a system. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's not just a relationship I was having with my ex, it's a, it's a conversation, I mean, I wasn't having with my ex, it's a conversation I was having with his family to say, hey, your son is gonna drive an end to this marriage and this is why. Mm -hmm. You follow me? And that's where the turning point, one was the growth, mm -hmm. right, process, and the other part, there were factors that played in my decision to say, I have to walk away because I'm acting out of character. This is not how my parents raised me. I want to add one more to that. Okay. And, and I, I know my wife will agree. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the time that she's kind of going through this struggle with her marriage. And I was, op I was open with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, she did. We were, we were each other's perfect rebound, to be quite frank. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the rebounds that, that Dennis Rodman was getting. No. You understand? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We knew each other's role. We were mm -hmm. very open for you know to each other and for each other. So it was easy for us to connect and be friends, right? And so therefore, with me being the man that I am, comparing to the man that she was kind of dealing with, night and day, made it very you know very easier for her to make a decision in regards to where she wanted her heart to be. Mm -hmm. Now, again, definitely respected her marriage. You know, I understood that again, things are, are, are you know, I, I don't want to be the person that's wrecking the home. Right, right. So certain things that made, I made sure that was in order. Boundaries. One, do you have any kids? No kids? Cool. You know, uh, another. Um, and who am I dealing with in regards to your, your husband? Is he the type that, again, I'm going to have to carry, 
you know, protection. Because mm -hmm. he's jealous, you know. And she explained, you know, not necessarily. I said, okay, cool. Well, let's just keep it cordial. Let's let's keep it pink. organic. Yeah. Let's keep like, hey, as men, bro. Yeah. I don't think nobody has to die senselessly if all. we can just see eye to eye. Let yeah. me know where you stand, so you can know where I stand, and so don't nobody get hurt yeah. in the, along the process. Um, two things before we get out of here. Yes. Right. And one is on this point. Can she have male friends? Absolutely. Can she, he have? 100%. Like, where, where is that line? There's no line because I just, I know, <laughs> there's no line because I trust him, right? When the trust is established, I always say, don't disrespect me mm -hmm. in public or don't do anything disrespectful that you know would make me upset, mm -hmm. right? And vice versa, I'm always cognizant of that. So, I, I'll give you a whole different answer. Mm -hmm. We are flat out confident with who we are mm -hmm. and what we got. And we're willing to walk, if, if we are willing to make a decision to ruin this, of course, we'll probably still land on our feet, but it would be. It's not worth it. it, it I, I it, got it a would confession be, to make. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not mature enough to allow my, my partner to have a male friend. And there's nothing wrong with that. If it's not control, because one thing that I've learned, and she's helped me exponentially yeah, yeah. As, as far as this, love is not control. Love is not. The if the you the go the over the there, yeah. that's, that's, that's not love. Right. 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 You know, it's not fear. Right. It's not, oh my God, you know. I know what my partner is going for, and I know what she ain't going for. Baby, listen. That's facts. If we can go to lunch, we can't go to no dinner, though. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? That. But this is why I say that. Yeah. When, especially when you're dealing with a very intentional, uh, um, uh, attractive female. Women don't understand a man will play his role for years Facts. for one slip up. Wow. Mm. So as far as you think, oh, man, Jason, that's my friend. Is Jason homosexual? Uh-uh, he's straight. Mm. I seen Jason, baby. Right. Jason. You seen that type. J Jason ain't even acknowledged me as your man. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think when that's that's when I, I what I mean about I friends, like yeah, baby, yeah, yeah. that's not your friend. Right. He's just waiting on me to mess up. You right. dig what I'm saying? Right. Now I don't want to have no issues or quarrels with no Jason. I don't go back and forth right. like that. But when you have a situation, I'm I'm an old soul when it comes to look, know your role, right? And I'm trusting in you mm -hmm. to to be an extension of me. Right. I'm an extension of her. Exactly. Right. 100%. So if I'm walking around at a party with the fellas and I see somebody and I'm like, nah, bro, I can't. Man, can't my get girl killed me. Yep. Like, uh, 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 I love her too much. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it's for her to say, hey, I'm still, I'm still hustling. Right. I just can't meet with women all day because it may be a man who pulls the strings. Right. Right. So I have to uh, 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 display myself and my talents in a way that's respectful as well as professional. Right. Going back to no, like you can't Balance trick, you can't trick the, no, no, the, the consumer. I agree with you. The difference for us though is we work in environments where we have to entertain both sexes. Mm -hmm. So he has to be able to trust me going to dinner knowing that I'm going to a business dinner to come mm -hmm. home that night while we're going to bed to have a conversation and praying before we go to sleep. Right. Right? And so that level of trust has to be there. Otherwise, how do we scale? How do we grow and at vice, that point? Because I can't always be at the dinner table. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for and, sure. And, he can, and vice versa. And we, as well. we, we, I mean, we are in a relationship as work partners. Mm -hmm. Partners, par yeah. And, and partners sometimes come before work. Work comes before partners. Mm -hmm. So if understanding like, hey, Mike, you know, I need you to go ahead and meet with such and such. And I'll tell her, hey, I need you to meet with such and such. And it's the oh, better yet, set. Mike may tell me today I got to fly to Chicago tomorrow. Mm. I got to have a meeting with Jessica DuPart from AT&T. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, okay, go ahead at me. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? Last question before <laughs> we get out of here. Yeah. How do you guys disconnect from work? Like, what's the glue? Like, do we eat marshmallows? Do we watch TV? Like, when you, when this is... When we're home, how can we be present? Can I have a confession. What you got? That's, that's what I need to work on. Mm. Well, disconnect. Yeah. 
Yeah, sort of, kind of. To answer your question, I was going to say we don't disconnect from work. That's what I'm saying, but we need to work on disconnecting. But I don't necessarily feel like that's always that's a huge issue. No, it's not an issue. And, mm-hmm. and, and I'm simply stating that is because the fact that uh, we are husband and wife and I get to be with my wife and she gets to be with me 24-7, you know, we talk about our goals and what we're trying to achieve right. all the time. Mm-hmm. And we know that, again, you know, I like to watch movies. I like to watch sports. All right. My wife likes to talk to her friends and she likes to travel. We meet in the middle. She allows me to do what I need to do. I allow her to do what she needs to do. And I sit back and we both relax. But 90% of our time together is working. It's based on my. But that goes and, back and to we, my. Family. And we both like, like, yeah. we love it. That's our love. That's our love language. We love it. But that's we, how, that's the household that I grew up in, too. So this is from Little Dora. Like, yeah. My father was a mathematician. My mom was a cardiologist in a house mm. at the dinner table that talked about work. Mm. So I didn't really see that. So that was my example. Right. You know, and, that, and, and I'm saying this because that's you guys' Cinderella shoe. Yeah. It that's, works for y'all. It absolutely. fits for y'all. Absolutely. That may not fit for, for me. Person. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of people, comparison is always a thief of, the thief of all joy. Mm-hmm. Right. If I'm saying, man, I just seen Mike and Dora. They say they always, babe, let's talk about work. Like, uh-uh, that ain't going to work. Yeah. But it's beautiful in this home. I appreciate right? that. Right. Yeah. Man, appreciate you guys. Tom, man, you guys was definitely something that was uh, putting me up on game from, from top to bottom. Brand to me being a man and my woman. Uh, vice, vice versa as well. Yeah, appreciate man. you pouring into us too, bro. So as we as we finish things, we're gonna all do it in unison. We're gonna use this camera first. Okay. Then we're gonna go to you guys' camera. Okay. And then we're gonna finish with our camera right all here. Right. We're gonna say one finger. One finger. One pinky. One, one pinky. pinky. One thumb. One, one thumb. thumb. One love. One love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, Funky Friday. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> man, you. appreciate y'all, man. Thank you so much. Man, man. y'all, it was so easy to talk because I could. This is who we are. Yeah. This is who we are. This ain't, but this we ain't a facade. Yeah, this this is, we don't, don't have to make it up. Matter.